You're watching the Coaches Roundtable on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Coaches Roundtable. I'm Ed Cody and welcome our guests from Pine Richland High School, Boston College quarterback Phil Jacoby. Phil, thanks uh, for coming on the show. I know you're busy with summer workouts, but um, how are things going for you? Thanks for having me. It's always great to be on, but uh, things are going well. We're just, um, the coaches are away right now. We're working out, running, throwing the ball, but uh, the coaches aren't involved. Hey, let's look at last year, Phil. Your first year at BC after transferring from Notre Dame. You lead the Eagles with a 6-5 and five record, 5-5 five and five ACC. And you gave Clemson all they could handle before you lost. I think it was 34-28. to 28. Then you beat your hometown team, Pitt, 31-30. to 30. How great was that? You had a great game, 358 yards, three touchdowns. No inter interceptions, and you you for the year you threw for two thousand five hundred eighty eight yards, seventeen TDs, and only five inter interceptions. The Eagles were third in the ACC in passing, twenty fourth in the country. Phil, when I watched you play last year, I said that's the Phil Jakovic I saw play quarterback of Pine Ridge, and confident and comfortable. What happened there that made you so comfortable with your play with coaches Halfley and your offensive coordinator Frank Signetti? Yeah, I think it comes down to them and the, the culture that they're creating. Um, just allowing us to be ourselves. They, they understand that uh, quarterbacks have different styles, that everybody's got their own unique style. And so they kind of have to just uh, let them bring it out instead of trying to, I don't know, box you into some certain uh, certain way of playing. But, yeah, I mean, it's just relaxed. They're all about um, – playing relaxed, having fun with it, and just letting it go, uh, playing loose. Did, did Signetti recognize that you, you have big play capabilities and, and tell you when you're out there, do what you feel you're comfortable with? It seemed like that when I watched you play. Yeah, he, he doesn't really coach that part of it. He says um, that just comes down to the individual that you, you can't keep, uh, teach those – off schedule plays and he thought that I did a really nice job of that but what we're working on is the on schedule the timing and rhythm plays we can get a lot better with so uh, that's all he's he's coaching the, the eyes and the feet um, the quarterback fundamentals. Hey Phil things are really looking up for BC uh, 2021, your recruiting class is ranked number 32 in the country by Rivals.com. Rivals ranks your number 22 class, 10 in the country. That has to be the highest ranking for a recruiting class ever at BC. What's turning all of this around? I really think it's Coach Halfley and the staff that he's bringing in. Like, There's a lot of buzz. There's a lot of energy and excitement in the area around Boston with Coach Halfley, he's young. He's got a lot of uh, energy. So I think it really just comes down to him, the way he recruits. Having been recruited by him, he's just real, um, yeah, authentic. And he's going to go out of – Phil? We're having some technical difficulties at this point. You there, Phil? Yeah. Yeah, we lost you for a second. Yeah. All right, you back? Okay, we had a little technical glitch there. Uh, 
you're you lose your top receiver in Hunter Long, but you have three wide receivers returning, including Zay Flowers, who had 56 catches, and then Jalen Gill and C.J. Lewis. Plus, you have nine starters back on offense. The offensive line's back. Big expectations for you guys this year. Yeah, I think uh, starts with us. We have a lot of uh, expectations for ourselves. Um, we're we're a lot more comfortable with the offense. I think last year was tough with uh, the COVID gap where we were all back home, like trying to learn it via Zoom. But um, we've had a lot of time now, full off season with spring ball this summer, and now we have camp coming up. So everybody's feeling very confident. We have. Um, Kobe White, who was really the most productive re receiver for BC uh, the last few years, but he tore his ACL last camp, so he's back. And we had a transfer, um, Trey Berry, from Jacksonville State, a tight end. So we're looking pretty good this year. We have a lot of weapons. Phil, how great will it be this year to play before a full crowd at, at home? I know last year he had limited attendance. That had to be strange to play before em so many empty seats. Oh, yeah. The first game, whenever we went out there, we were playing Duke. It was weird. We were looking around. We're like, what is this? This is a, a practice. It was it was kind of eerie. But, um, yeah, we can't wait. Hopefully we get a lot of fans at the BC games. But I, I just can't wait to play in person and, and have the fans there. Phil, we've been talking about the, uh, the, the change in uh, collegiate athletics, names, imaging, and licensing. Uh, what are your thoughts about that, and where are you in this process? I see that Kenny Pickett of uh, Pitt says he has some opportunities. Other players saying they're branching out into different stuff like clothing, attire, and video games. What are your thoughts along this line? I think it's a good thing, ultimately. I, I think it it helps the sport. Like, it, it brings the the fans to the, the players more, like, the more connection. But... Um, the teams really do have to be careful with it though, because it can become a distraction. I can, I can see how easily it, that, uh, comes into play where people are putting, making money on the side over football. So you just have to keep your priorities straight, but I'm definitely interested in some opportunities, you know, on the side here in the summer or whatever, uh, to make a little bit of money, but really the, the amount of money that you can make through this is nothing compared to what you're going to get with the degree or the chance to go play in the NFL. And Phil, speaking of your degree, what are you studying at Boston College? Economics. All right. Well, it seems like you're on the right track there and understand about business deals. Do you have anyone there at BC that's advising you about what to do? Not only yourself, but all the athletes with the, with the NIL. The compliance office has met with us and kind of given us the rundown, but uh, nobody that's really not yet. I, I mean, I've had people that have reached out to me wanting to help, but I haven't really committed to anything yet. Phil, several weeks ago, our uh, male athlete of the year was Pine Ridge and quarterback Cole Spencer. Becomes the third Pine Ridge and quarterback in the last six years to win that award following you and Ben DiNucci. How, how great is that? I don't know if we'll have a, a school ever um, match that again for us. Pretty pretty significant. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Great for him. Cole's a hard worker, and he, he's going to do great um, with wrestling. But yeah, I think it's a combination of factors. The offense that we played in, the – that allowed us to thrive and definitely the coaches, uh, especially Coach Yoakum, the quarterback coach who was there, um, starting with Danucci. So, I mean, he helped us so much with just understanding the game and, and playing. Well, Phil, thanks for taking time out. Uh, the opening game, it's just around the corner when you open up with Colgate on September the 4th. I wish you great luck, have a great season, and uh, I'd like to have you back anytime. Thank you, Mr. Cody. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Go Eagles. I'll be right back with Ellen George.
high school sports, community events, all of your favorite local shows are calling the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel their home. Find out everything your neighborhood has to offer on Channel 100 or on YouTube. Spirit, town pride, local communities. This is the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. I'm back, joined to my right by the Swami, George Abraham, to my left by the Tiger, Albert Campman. Guys, it seemed like yesterday Phil Jakovic was on here as our ML Athlete of the Year. Heads into his fourth college year. He has this year and next year to go to BC. And, and one thing I said to him, you guys tell me if you noticed it too, when I watched him play last year for BC, he seemed like the quarterback I saw at Pine Ridge, confident and comfortable in what he was doing in big play capability. Yeah, I think the coach realized what he's capable of doing. And they put a good system in for him. I mean, the system was there. Let's put. Let's, let's take that back. Field chose a good system for him. You know, that system of of, of Pine Richland, which is rerun, throw throw drop back roll out, a lot of things involved, a lot of waggles, a lot, a lot of made for field, field, no question. And I, how about this? BC's recruiting class of 2021 was ranked 32 in the country by rivals. Their 2022 class is ranked number 10 by rivals, the best they've ever had. Well, the coach came from Ohio State, correct? Yeah, and, and, he, and uh, he coached at Pitt so, for a while. Yeah, so, you know. Don't uh, hold that against him. <laughs> <laughs> and Signetti. You know that uh, um, they know the value of recruiting. It's, wow. it's, the, it's, it's everything. It is not, it's not the coaching. It's the players you get. If you get and the they're, and they're, getting, they're getting good players. Yes. They have nine starters back on offense. Their three leading wide receivers are back. And they always have an offensive line. Even when they big. were bad, they had line. Big. Very big. Well, it'll be interesting season around the corner. Oh, September 4th, they open up with Colgate. Oh, oh, poor Colgate getting a beating <laughs> up. Well, they're pretty good for 1A. Yes. Let's go to Spotlight, uh, Major League Baseball, former Seneca Valley High School quarterback and baseball player. Kevin Smith, who's now 33, a backup catcher for the Braves, made his first appearance ever and played at PNC Park. I, I swear it was yesterday with him that we were talking mm -hmm. about him playing at uh, – Seneca Valley going on to pit as a quarterback, and now he's 33 years old. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were, were shocked that we weren't what, knew what, what sport he was going to do. All of a sudden, he shows up in baseball. I remember him from football. That's going to pit? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Nike Outdoor Track Nationals in Eugene, Oregon. How hot was it out there a week ago? Butler Track star C.J. Singleton, he was 7th in the 5,000-meter run, and Skyler Vavra was 10th in the steeplechase. Wasn't it well over 100 out there? A week One was ago? 117. So hot. They moved so it hot. to midnight, and it was still hot, but it was 117. And a retirement, longtime Seneca Valley High School softball coach George True retires after 28 years and 250 career wins. A recruiting news, Pine Ridge and linebacker Jeremiah Hazley, 6'3", 225, he commits to Duke. Hazley was a starter in last year's undefeated 11-0 team. And in girls track, Butler grad Alexia Meckling, she is committed to Penn State. Meckling placed fifth in the WPAL in the high jump and qualified for the PIAA this past spring. Our stories of the week, let's go to Major League Baseball draft. The Pirates take highly rated catcher Henry Davis of Louisville. Big kid, 6'2", 210, past season, 15 home runs, 48 RBIs, 370 batting average. They say he has one of the great arms of the catchers in college baseball. Needs some work defensively. I don't think that's any big deal. What do you guys think about the pick? Well, the, the reason I liked it, it was not so much it was Henry Davis. It gave room to take three, to, three other top 50 players the next three, three picks. They, if they would have taken lighter, they could not have paid for that. So, so I think Terrington was thinking of that. You know, let's get four great, fair, fair, four very good players instead of one. I, I will see how it works out. Um, I'm, I told George before, I don't like taking pitchers in the first round. I'm always scared that you will end up wasting a pick because the Tommy John, they go, their arms go. And so I, I, I'd, rather have a, I'd rather have an everyday player in the first round. I, I like shortstops because they're such good athletes. They're the best athletes going, they, they, yes. You could move them around. They could play another right. position. You've got about six in their system that can't hit. Isn't that a shame? And that, that's true. And we know, listen, the same thing we say about pro football draft. This is not an exact science. You don't know who's going to turn up. They've had a couple of good ones like Jason Kendall and Garrett Cole. Jeff King was okay, mm -hmm. but as a number one pick, he wasn't sensational. So you just – and they've had a lot of guys never even made it to the majors. Yeah, it's a crapshoot. Can't say any better than that. Uh, first of all, if you take a high school kid, you're never sure. You see the ability, mm -hmm. but you're not sure. And as a, as a, as a college guy, those bats still are more powerful than the bats they use 
in Major League Baseball. You're never sure that's right, Ed. It's a crap shoot. See, all I care about with the Pirates is I don't look at it and think they were saving money. That's all I care well, about. Here, here, they just spent all their money. They, they here's spent the $14 million. Dollars. They, spent they, they have $14 million. Okay, mm-hmm. the first round pick he slotted, not guaranteed, for $8.4 million. I think the Pirates would like to sign him in about six. They will, yes. Can they sign him? Then spread no, the other at, eight out. At, Makes at sense. six. That's the question. Now, Will Bednar of Mars, congratulations. Mississippi State, number 14 pick. He goes to the Giants. Uh, they they have a $4 million slot at that 14 pick. I, I would think he ought to be able to get 2 and a half to $3 million at, at least. Think about that. In Playing that. baseball and getting that contract from Mars High School. That, that is quite a thrill. What he did, he became big, a big game pitcher. And they're always looking for those. They don't want the guys that beat somebody on a Saturday afternoon who can't play. He showed it on the big stage. And he, he jumped up, and, and Kumar Rocker, even though he was taking 10 by the match, his, his stock fell. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and number two, Texas took lighter out of Vandy. And uh, then uh, the signing bonuses, as we said, they're not, they're not guar- guaranteed. So what do the Pirates do? You think they're going to sign less? They made a couple of other interesting picks, an outfielder, Lonnie White Jr., who's a Penn State recruit, a tremendous wide receiver, yeah. and a big kid at 6'2", 200 pounds. And then shortstop pitcher Bubba Chandler, who's committed to Clemson. But can Play they sign these guys? These guys are going to say, we are not. We want the money. Yeah, my thinking is that if they don't, then shame on them because they should have done their research ahead of time and talked to their parents. Those are really that, iffy picks. You know? And you know what else, too? The other thing, we didn't think of this before. How much money can that kid make at Clemson? See, before, he mm. couldn't make any money at Clemson. It's a different game now. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, it, well, those guys are interesting athletes, dual sport athletes. You just wonder. They're just going to college now. So, you know, I, I think their attention is there going to college. I'm not saying they're not interested in baseball, but it's going to take quite a bit to get them away. Yeah, I agree. And, but I, I'll repeat myself again. I'll be shocked that they don't sign them because I think – They've talked to the parents, and, and everybody in Major League Baseball said both of them. And he had, said, he had someone on Twitter yesterday saying they something want to play about baseball. baseball. No, they want to play baseball. So that's I think they've done the research. If they do get those four, they immediately jump to the number one draft, uh, number one farm system in baseball. That's uh, that's what you want to hear. When the Pirates went, did good in 2015, 16, 17, they had kid guys coming through. There's only, that's the only chance the Pirates have. They have a three-year window. <laughs> I, I, to get them all there. Saying, I'm looking 2024, 25. That's the only chance they have. I, I want to see it happen. That's the only chance they have. Well, the Pirates finished first half of the season with a great six to five comeback win over the Mets after being down five to nothing. And how about winning pitcher David Bednar two and one? What a first half of the season he's had. Three point zero nine. I think he's their future closer. Maybe sooner than later. Rodriguez is going to get traded. I know the Mets are looking for bullpen help. I was watching Bednar pitch the other day, and I said. Reminds me of David Justy. Mm-hmm. It, it, you see what I'm saying? He he looks like that compactness that right. he has, and his delivery he seems so much like David Justy. Well, you got that right, Eddie. He is going to be the next closer, and that, that puts a lot more pressure. No, I'm three telling weeks. you, you know, seventh and eighth grade innings seem a lot easier than getting those last three outs. That's those are difficult to get. You know, it's funny. I'm watching that game, and I'm going the winning hit by Wilmer Defoe. We know where did some of these guys. Come from a lot of got the, yeah, it got no, the winning hit. or whatever. It, 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 the the first baseman they got from the he Cardinals. Had the winning run Fourteen in. for twenty-eight. Yeah, uh, Castro looks like the, you know. Come, he has a, he's a real deal swing. I don't know where they're going to play him, but I like when you bring a kid up from Altoona, and he steps up immediately and starts hitting. I don't want a guy to say, "Well, I don't know if he was ready." Uh, Castro has done well since he. Now, will he go to second base? Yeah, I, I don't know where he's going to go. I don't know where he can play. I don't know the position. That's interesting. Well, the All-Star game, you mentioned second base. Come Adam Fraser, he will hit ninth. And now Brian Reynolds, he will start in center field and bat eighth. Uh, how great it is to have two parts it's in awesome. the All-Star game. But I'm interested in this year because of one guy in particular, and that's Shohei Otani. Otani, he's hitting 279, 33 homers, 70 RBIs. He's going to pitch. And he's going to be a leadoff lead hitter. The most home runs at the All Star break. It's number four all time. The most, of course, by uh, Bonds. Uh, so the thirty three. But you know, the second half, doing both. Is he going to hold up? He's had some arm injuries before. You think at some point they say, "Look, Otani, we just want you to be uh, an everyday hitter for us," or 
you just say, listen, you're going to pitch, but you're done. You're four innings, and you're out of there. I think that last thing you said. I don't think I don't think it, they'll still use him as a pitcher, but really limit his innings. I think that's what's going to happen. My four do whatever he says. They've changed the rules of the All Star game for the guy. His right, his contract coming up is going to be close to forty million a year. Whew. Yeah. They got trial running, running, so it's not going to be there. Yes. Yeah, it's not going to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the a problem when you have a guy. They're on the what the deal for trial for ten years. Right, you know, they left or something. Hey, uh, and here's the thing about uh, Adam Fraser. He had 115 hits at the break, uh, top five all time for the Pirates, the most ever. 146 by Matty Alou. Yeah. Remember that year, 1966. I'll never, I'll never forget it. Think about 30 more hits than this guy had. It seems yeah. like he's on base all the time. Alou was, he was a man. It was like every yeah. game he was like two for four, three for five. All yeah, the and, time. He, and he, and he well, we talked about this on the show, he tried to get singles. You yeah. understand? He was, he was not trying. He was he was looking at the third baseman. The third baseman played up. He bounced it over his head. He played back. He bunted. So it was, and it was amazing. And he sprayed the ball. Yes. He used the whole, yes. whole, whole field. Imagine that. Hey, exciting as that win was for the Pirates, they're still 34-56 and 56 at the break, the third worst record in Major League Baseball. Uh, the over and under with, with, what, 72 games left, can they win 28 of them? 29, <laughs> 29, he get under 100 law. I don't think it matters. They're going to lose 99, they're, they're, they're 100. Losing 100. Uh, I know they're losing. I just don't know how many. They need losing, to lose 104. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But they're losing 100 because, you know, you're, you're, we're almost positive sitting on the show that Frazier and Rodriguez are going. At least. We're almost positive. And maybe the guy with yeah. the big beard we, you know, that started hitting gamble, the ball. Yeah, gamble. that's right. Yeah. Gamble. gamble. Yeah. I hope they do sign um, Reynolds. <clears throat> I hope they sign Reynolds to make. I'd be disappointed. In you know, I hope they. I hope they do just because he's one of the best. At least have one. At least have one game. player that we that the kids a star. Can, the kids can root for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Elsewhere around Major League Baseball, Yankee pitcher Garrett Cole complete game one nothing shutout win over uh, Houston. His former team twelve strikeouts. He threw one hundred and twenty nine pitches, which would used to be normal game. back in the day. And then how about this uh, Marlins pitcher, Pablo Lopez, a Major League Baseball record. He struck out the first nine. nine Atlanta Brave batter. What was he throwing? Golf balls. <laughs> <laughs> I never it. heard of this. And you know what hurt the Braves? They were cold against Pittsburgh. They got hot in between. They were hitting going into that thing. game. I going don't know to, what he was back doing. To Cole. The, the best story about Cole was Boone came out to take him Boone out. Down. And he said, Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I finally we have a pitcher that says usually they yeah. hand the ball off and they're happy to go to the, uh, uh, into the dugout. Yeah, I saw Cole said I'm staying in. Praise the Lord for getting. Yeah, I Cole. saw one the other day. Joe Torre got to the top step and and uh, the pitcher told him get back in there. Yeah. What do what do you think? You've seen? Yes. I think. What do you think? Uh-huh. Warren Spawn did to Fred yeah, Haney went, when oh, Haney right came out. He just out. gave him a look and never even come the out. Gibson said like. McCarver said he'd start halfway on. He'd go, get back there. Hey, speaking of the Yankees and, and Houston, in the final game of this series, uh, the Yankees were, went into the uh, – had a 7-2 lead going to the bottom of the ninth, and Aaron Judge had been really giving it to Altuve, tugging on his shirt. Right. Well, guess what? Houston scored six runs Got in the, the bottom last of the Altuve hit the game-winning home run, and he was pulling on his shirt when he came across home. And home not play. only that, they didn't go – to Chapman. Right. Yeah, that is concern. I, I, yeah. Any Yankee fan watching us today yeah. has to say, we're paying this guy that much money to not bring him in. To not bring think, him Think of that. That's right. crazy. That's right. Right. It's amazing. And I don't want to say this, and I might be the only one thinking like this. All this stuff about Houston cheating before, which is part of baseball. They've cheated and been stealing signs since Ebbets Field, the polo grounds with cameras in Boston and everywhere. If Houston wins a World Series uh, again without anything, that would be a story. Yeah, and that's what and people root against them because of that. Mm. They, want, they want to say proof that they can only win Jeez. with cameras. You know, so we'll but, see what happens. But they won't say anything about their own team. No, uh, no, uh, no. Uh, uh, doing Not it. Boston, that's right. No, the White Sox, they said, the one guy, he said, that Jack McDowell said, I'm telling you, they had film set up in the other room. Well, just like I, I, I mentioned before, the night Harvey Addicts pitched the perfect 12 innings, the Braves told the Pirates they stole every single sign they still couldn't hit by Pirate <laughs> catcher, and they still couldn't hit him. <laughs> I mean, this is just the way baseball has been with scuffing the ball and stealing signs, and it's been going on for years. Hey, the, the real shocker was uh, Washington with pitcher Max Serzer, who's going to start for the National League. They led San Diego 8 to nothing after three and a half innings. 
only to see San Diego rally for seven runs in the bottom of the third on a grand slam by relief pitcher, uh, what's his name, Camarera, uh, who came into the game with a 9.64 ERA Boy, off Scherzer. Boy, did he hit that. You know, it's he interesting about that. It. If, if Scherzer's name was Jones, he'd have been out of the game. Yeah. yeah. So Scherzer should start out. But he was telling people, you know, he, he's he's one of the wickedest dudes on the mound. Well, he did what you said he'll you say, like. He told him, I yes, ain't coming. He's the, he's, the, he's, the, he's the wicked guy. They'll say they won't mess with him. No, he won't, no. I, so I, he should have been and, out of the And game. I think he must have thought, I'll just yeah, zip a fastball. Yeah, this guy can't hit. He's never bad. One bad pitch, four runs. And, and they put that pitcher in there because they just needed the fill. They were up. Yeah, absolutely. And boy, did he tag that. Yeah, crunched it. National Hockey League, Stanley Cup, Tampa Bay won, Montreal nothing. Tampa Bay, their second cup. Within 10 months uh, since the Pens were back-to-back in 2016-17, Nikita Kucherov, 32 points in the playoffs. to stand with Mario Lemieux is the only players to lead postseason in scoring two straight years. He joins Lemieux and Gretzky is the only players with 30-plus playoff points. Braden Point with 14. And how about goalie Andre Vasilevsky? He wins the Conn Smythe Award. Yeah, Vasilevsky was the key to this whole thing. We say it all the time in the show. Watch us. Put our re- re- put our repeats on. You'll win with a hot goalie. And he was unbelievable. Montreal finally got some zip in their, in their skates. We're pestering him the last two games, pounding him. Nothing got bought. One nothing, you can't lose, Eddie. Don't give any goals, you don't lose. And, and he sets a record. He closed off five straight series with a shutout. Think about they're, that. They're now calling Tampa Champion Bay with mm-hmm. the, the Devil Rays they should be. winning the pennant. The Buccaneers winning the Super Bowl and back-to-back cups here. And they still don't go to the games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you know what? I, I wanted to mention this. Last, I, I watched the uh, the cup final Wednesday night. Then the next night, watched uh, uh, Phoenix uh, beat Milwaukee. And I'm saying the contrast that it's so hard at times to follow the puck. Hockey, if you've been to a game, it's much better to watch in person than it is on a team. You watch the NBA game. It's so exciting. They highlight everything. It's a great made-for-TV sport. Made for the kids. That's what it's made for. You know, we'll, we'll watch it and go to bed. Kids will be talking about it for the next three days. They love the and, NBA. And, and, and that series has been, been uh, terrific. Giannis with back-to-back 40-point yeah, games. It's quite special. Hey, Wimbledon, uh, Novak Djokovic won his 20th Grand no Slam way. title <laughs> to tie Federer and Nadal. So uh, who is the best? Who is the, the GOAT? There Djokovic's are three of them tied. Djokovic. You like Djokovic? Yeah, so I think between his head-to-head with... Uh, the other guys, in the fact, he's going to pile four or five more on there. Yeah, he can he he can win more of a variety of ways than than Nadal and, and uh, Federer. Yeah, like Nadal, if, if it's not uh, play, play, you yeah. don't think he's going to win. No. This guy, anyway, he's any tremendous. Surface. Yeah. Hey, women's tennis. Ash Barty of uh, Australia. She defeated Carolina uh, Pliskova to become the first Australian to win since her mentor. Yvonne Goulagong back 1980. in 1980. How about that? Yeah, I, you know, I uh, the women's names are so unfamiliar to me <laughs> that, like, I always, I always knew, you know, Chrissy Everett. I always mm-hmm. knew Serena. These names, I get them mixed up, so I have to say, is that girl from Serbia, that girl from uh, England, yeah. is that girl from Russia? I was watching one you know. day, I was watching one day and didn't know which one I had. I was, <laughs> I was trying to figure out, they both had these long names, and I'm looking and I'm seeing, well, who had the service because... <laughs> As you say, most of the names are not familiar. Yes. No. Uh, European Soccer Championship, Italy defeated England in a shootout 3-2 to two to win their uh, second European Cup. But the, the game was uh, afterwards marred. Uh, failed goals by uh, two England players who happened to be black. Saw them the oh. recipients of racial oh, slurs geez. and death threats. Uh, are we surprised? Oh, We're disappointed. Are, are we surprised? Are they pathetic? How sick hey, these yeah. fans and, you are. know, I heard about it. I don't follow it as closely. The, the kid that took the last shot was 19. And they were saying that was a terrible job of By stacking those shooters. There are states that won't allow a shootout because they don't want the kid that missed the last one to deal with it. Right. You know, worst thing about this whole thing, Eddie? There shouldn't be a shootout. <laughs> Just keep playing. Stan, no. keep there playing. There should be no death. shootout. The, the, that'd be like a major I baseball. Agree. Home run derby. Home run derby yeah, with deciding the play. It's, yeah, it's, I agree. It's, it's, it's I play agree. the game, so, and, and I don't care if it takes all night. Uh, Don't let it decide so by the just, just the shame for these kids mm-hmm. to take this yes. kind of yes. abuse. And hey, that's it for us. But next week, we have a lot to talk about the Olympics coming up and what some drastic changes there. But thanks for joining us. We'll see you then.